Hello again, guys. I think this is a champion a lot of people are excited for. Let's get it. We got Diana here. Leona and Diana's cutscenes seem ridiculous compared to the rest. I don't know why. This is like late Each game, final boss. Is an act of passion. Let's check it out. Diana, seek out targets. Night, night force energy. I see. Whoa. She's a cheap unit. Yes, dude. Yes. Your own light cheap the units. Darkness. Quick attack challenger. The light I cherish, Queen Sister. Okay. Yeah, we get it. Nightfall. I hear you. The new moon conceals you cheap from units. Diana is a cheap unit. An aggressive card. When night falls four times. <laughs> Let's go. She levels up. Find your path in the dark and follow no false light. Wow. She's so cheap. Nightfall or when you activate another nightfall, give me plus two and challenge this round. Wow, that's like, she's not like super crazy out there in terms of mechanics, but damn, is she valuable. Obviously, she's already flipped though. The truth protects our cause. Being whack elusive on her, dude. <laughs> give her elusive. There we go. Nightfall. Give me and an ally elusive this round. That looks like a six mana four two with the effect though. It's kind of expensive. Into the daylight, Diana. Daylight blinds, but night renews. All right. All right. Let's go check out the cards. Alrighty, so we have the overlay here and we've got the cards. Let's firstly obviously talk about Diana. Diana is a two mana 2-2 two, two with quick attack and nightfall will give me challenger this round. Then once she's flipped, she gets that challenger. Like pretty much after every time you play a nightfall for the turn. That's a little, that's, that seems, it seems decent. Like you're probably still going to play this in your Nightfall deck for sure. Because you only have to activate Nightfall four plus times. With Nightfall, it can do multiple Nightfalls in a turn. So it's actually not that hard to level her up. And she becomes a two mana three, three. I, um, Diana seems really strong if like Nightfall becomes quite popular. Like we're talking like a super aggressive Nightfall deck that just wants to spam out. Like you're probably not going to level up, you're not going to level her up on curve. But sometimes you can do it while well, she's like kind of still on the field. I mean, she's one mystic shot away from dying, right? She's kind of squishy. But if she doesn't, if she doesn't like get dealt with, it's like not, it's like, it sucks. But she's a two mana two two that provides you val value. And she has a quick attack and build. So it's a really, really strong play on turn two. She also has Nightfall herself, so you can combo her with the card. Uh, her champion spell, Dying is Pale Cascade. Give an ally plus two, plus one this round. Shuffle Dying into your deck. Nightfall, draw one. Wow. So this is a burst speed, give an ally, plus two, plus one, and nightfall, draw one. Which usually, like, this is going to be like one of those cards that oftentimes gets nightfalled anyway during combat. Unless, of course, you're open attacking, then it's not the case. The actual spell itself seems reasonable, um, mainly for the card draw. The two one, eh, but it's a two mana draw one a lot of the time. This is kind of similar to the other card that we saw with the heal two. Draw, t uh, draw one, that seemed quite powerful. This will see play. Even outside of Diana's Champion's signature spell, this will card will definitely see play. Let's jump over to the top right there. Hush, a three mana burst speed spell. Silence the unit this round, creating a, create a fleeting hush in hand. How good is this card? Silence is very niche, right? It's great for like trading into other units that have effects. Let us, let us wait and see how powerful Hush is because it's a super valuable card in terms of this fleeting Hush uh, kind of replayability. 
Um, if this sees any play, it's definitely not going to be a three of. But I can see some people experimenting with this card as a one of at first. Hush. Like, I don't know. We haven't seen like full silence cards like this before. Like the closest comparison I can refer to this card would be referring to other card games such as Hearthstone, where silence can be quite powerful. But in this game, it's completely different. Silencing is... Your opponent always gets to have prior on like blocking and stuff. So we're not really like silencing certain units that get in the way of our plan. And it's only for this round. It's not permanently. I think that card is average to below average, somewhere in between there. Uh, just thinking about the current set of cards and how powerful silence generally is, it's not super strong. We do get the silence champion, so. So I'm not sure how it works in terms of like, let's say Anivia open attacks against you and then you hush. I'm not sure if it actually stops the effect from happening. We also have the Gygnus, the Moonstalker. So that's a six mana four two with Nightfall will give me an ally elusive this round. Is this another decent finisher for Nightfall? Literally, if you don't Nightfall this out, the card is actually garbage. You have to Nightfall it out. Like that's, so there's no other way. So it's not the best on curve play unless you've got combo pieces in hand. Is this a decent finisher? It has to be considered. It has elusive. Elusive is quite strong in general. So I have to give this card an average to above average, but it seems quite expensive for at what point in the game elusives are kind of relevant. I wonder if aggro decks that build built into Nightfall can just kind of get the game done faster than this. I don't know. I don't know about I don't know about the Moonstalker card. I think um we might have other paths of ending the game sooner. I think we want to end the game super fast with a Nightfall deck. At least that's my first impression of building a Nightfall deck. I want to make a super aggressive deck that just plays like, I don't know. If we're going to do like what they want us to probably do, Nightfall, Diana, Targon, Shadow Wilds, aggro deck. I don't know the value of Psychness, the Moonstalker, when realistically I want to end the game even quicker than turn six. However, we don't really have any solid over the top finishes, so board presence is going to be the most important for like this Nightfall deck. And maybe being able to go elusive towards the end of the game is the way to finish. Granting Diana elusive is kind of nutty, especially if you played lots of Nightfall units that round or activate Nightfall. So perhaps Psychonist and Moonstalker will see play. And if I could put it on any level of similar similarity to another card, I think I'll take Citrus Courier for example. Because Citrus Cairo requires you to have a little bit of setup to get the uh, bonus effect, which might be a multiple cards or damaging the Nexus. Citrus Cairo is pretty strong. This can also do a very similar thing in the sense that instead of like open attacking to try and activate Citrus Courier, you can simply just uh, play a certain card, then play Psychonist and Moonstalker, grant you allies elusive, and putting it onto a Dine is pretty strong, especially after she's flipped. Like you can be attacking immediately with a uh, a 5-2 and a 4-2 with elusive. That seems like a pretty good finisher. You know what? I think I think I think the Moonstalker might be okay, but we'll def definitely have to experiment with it. I don't know if we run three of it, but we'll have to wait and see. Um I won't put that in a dumpster trash actually. I think the card might be okay. But the Poro Cannon, to play me discard one, create two daring poros in hand. Daring's are the elusive units, right? So this is for uh, PNZ, which is kind of strange that we're seeing PNZ cards right now. We might be actually not receiving as many Targon cards as originally thought. We may have seen a lot, all of the Targon cards for now, which would be Diana, Leona, and Tarek. I don't think I missed any. So we might be getting to see the PNZ card, which people are expecting it to be um Victor, right? To play me discard one, create two daring poros in hand for zero mana. More discard synergy. Think about a discard aggro deck right now. This card finds decent value actually. This card's actually not too bad. Daring poros are the elusive ones, right? You can definitely slot this into your discard deck instead of running um, flame chompers or, you know, jury rig. Sort of. You put, you do, actually, you don't replace those cards. But you could definitely consider this. The power of it, like, is that zero mana as well? So you can, like, play Porokana on turn one and guarantee playing an elusive unit on turn one. You know what? It generates lots of value in hand. You play suit up with this deck? Hell yeah, I'm a fan of Porokana. Sign me up, dude. Sign me up on that. That's actually, this is actually a really good card. 
the fact that it's zero mana too is like the most relevant thing here if it wasn't zero mana then it's kind of a consideration it would still be okay but the fact that we can play this on turn one i think that is really cool discard jury rig like imagine going super wide and then just kind of losing to make it rain <laughs> which still exists in the metagame and probably will exist next expansion if people are playing aggressive decks Realistically, I see this not as a card that you want to play with Poros, but as a aggressive tool that you can consider using in aggro decks. Like I might even consider using this in like a burn aggro deck. Like just kind of thinking about the burn aggro decks I have right now that go Noxus and PNC. You can run this um, and then maybe discard some fodder in your some bad cards in your hand and play two elusive units. I like Poro Cannon. Um, Hush is a card I'm not too sure about. Uh, Psychus the Moonstalker will have to be average to above average. That's probably going to see play. Diana seems solid. Most biggest comparison is going to be Lucian. Lucian's ability to level up is quite hard. Diana is most likely going to be leveling up 50% of the time. And a lot of your games, Diana will level up and net you some quick value. And you're going to be like looking to play Diana in a super aggressive deck. I don't see how Diana finds you any value in some sort of mid, mid range to late game deck. Although, maybe Dyne is also okay in a mid-range deck, but then you're kind of forcing yourself to build into Nightfall, where uh, mid-range decks do want to kind of curve out. But there might be a place for her in mid-range decks. Like, don't get me wrong, if we do manage to make some sort of mid-range deck that is able to sustain the Nightfall effects and include Diana, and it curves out really nicely still, which is not unrealistic with the one drop that we have, Diana might fit suitably into a mid-range deck as well. We might even do something crazy like go... Uh, Targon into Ionia, experiment with Lulu and get some really cheeky value because we can grant the buff to Diana, turning her into a 4-4 with uh, Nightfall sometimes. It's kind of cool. Obviously, a lot of people uh, on day one are going to be building a deck with Diana and Nocturne and then experimenting with that, quickly realizing that the deck's getting blown up by Make It Rain <laughs> and the PNZ, so they're going to shift it around to maybe consider going to more mid-range. So yeah, actually Diana might find really strong uh, use in mid-range decks. Challenge is quite a powerful effect. Challenger inbuilt to her goes pretty well with Tarek as well. All right, Diana seems like, yeah, Diana's gonna be a crazy card. It's oftentimes gonna get dealt with, that's fine. Her ch signature spell, champion spell, seems quite powerful too. Almost powerful enough that we'll consider running the card itself in the deck because of draw. Draw is very powerful in card games. So yeah, pretty happy to see this. Diana looks really solid. Glad to see a uh, cheap champion here today. Um, this is going to be a really suitable card. It's going to be a lot of fun and I cannot wait, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm not sure what happens from this point, if we see any more champion releases or what, but you can expect to see me soon. My name is Fake Hero. You guys have been awesome. Don't forget to leave a like and I will see you soon.